Indeed, the whole area has been under heavy attack for days now, with government buildings and hospitals being hit. Tens of thousands of locals have fled across the border to Russia. Paul Isley reports next on how, for some refugees, though, the dangers are even greater. When the bombs come, people flee. But what about those who can't? The helpless, the desperate, the sick. This eight-month-old baby cannot breathe without a respirator. For days, it was too dangerous for the ambulances to come and get him. As far as I know, doctors with the specialized ambulance from the regional center could not get here because of the shooting. Our son was trapped here and we could not move him to safety. Zhenya was one of the last to be evacuated from the children's hospital in Slavyansk. And not a minute too soon. When the bombs fell and other children were taken to the cellar, he had to stay in the intensive care unit where nurses would cover him with mattresses to protect him from falling debris. I have to explain all the time that it's war here. You need to be here to understand what's going on. Zhenya is now safe in a Russian hospital. Nearly half of the people in Slavyansk have been evacuated, according to local authorities. But the journey out is also fraught with danger. Difficult roads, aerial bombings and artillery fire in a scene that's being repeated in cities across eastern Ukraine. There are three ways out, train, bus and car. In a race against time, more and more people are becoming desperate. And for most, it doesn't matter how they get out, just to go. Veronica is leaving with her two-year-old son, mom, sister and niece. She's packing summer and winter clothes, as she doesn't know how long they'll be gone. Planes are flying overhead. My child is very scared. The sound of the blasts are very loud. We want to leave and not come back until it comes down. We're afraid that a real nightmare could be unleashed here. A lot of people and children could die. The fear is growing by the hour. At the front door, the suitcases are packed and ready. Veronica's family names are on the waiting list. And as soon as the next evacuation is cleared, they'll be on their way. The so-called government in Kiev said they will wipe eastern provinces from the face of the earth. They consider us terrorists, but we're just civilians. Veronica's waiting for a call from this man, Valery Kutnyakov. He's managing the evacuation from here, a classroom given to him by the People's Republic of Lugansk. A month ago, Valery wanted to send his daughter and grandson out of the country. But when he searched online, he found many parents in the same situation but no one doing anything. He's since evacuated some 200 people. I'm ready to move everyone to safety who needs it. Men, women and children, everyone. In the few minutes Valerie speaks with us, he has 21 missed calls on his cell phone. Parents terrified of what the future holds, but even more afraid to stay around and find out. Paulus Lea RT, Lugansk, Eastern Ukraine.